Hey, everybody. It's Jeff and Ron here with the Sense of Things. And we're starting off another week discussing all kinds of things, market and certainly economic as we talk. So on today's show, Ron's got some really interesting data for us about one of the big holders of Alibaba. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're also going to talk about AI patents and how China is starting to kick our butt in the United States in that world. I'm going to finish up today with a little bit of a rant on government data because there were some numbers coming out this week from the Commerce Department or the Bureau of Labor Stati or Statistics that revised the job numbers and massively. So stick around. We'll be right back with you. Hey, everybody. It's Jeff and Ron here. Ron, how you doing, my friend? Good morning. Getting into the wee hours of the summer. Kids yes. are back to school. And uh, Jackson Hole is kicking off this morning. And, oh, no kidding. They talked about uh, future rate cuts. <laughs> what a surprise. Interesting. Yeah, we've not been talking about them up to this point. So I, I don't know why, why all of a sudden they're discussing them. No, it's all good. All right, let's all jump right, right in. Why don't we kick off with your stuff and then uh, we'll get to my rant. So Michael Burry, as you can see the screen now, Michael Burry yep. is famous for one of the few people that was part of the big short featured by Michael Lewis in the movie. Mm. And I thought it was just very interesting if you just take a look that with his Scion investment, that's his hedge fund, as far as his inflows and the outflows, where he was at the end of the quarter and where he is now. Mm. And I thought it was quite interesting that if you take a look at this, on how he's reduced his real estate, his financials, and his consumer staple positions, mm -hmm. and have increased significantly in consumer discretionary, industrials, and energy. Yeah. And look, he's one of the smartest guys out there. He certainly sifts through the noise and, and cuts out the noise for his own convictions. So I thought this was, this was pretty interesting. And why he was raising his Alibaba stake, I don't know. Because Alibaba, if anybody knows anything about their common stock, are no voting rights Yeah, as far as their class of shares. So I thought this was interesting. Yeah. And let's say I say one other interesting piece of it is his real estate position. This is something that kind of came on my radar that I'd really not been watching for a while because it's been, it's literally been a, a dead place to put money for going on three or four years now. And all of a sudden, within the last month, real estate has really shot up. It's as a sector, it's up like 16% in a month. Well, uh, when they were raising interest rates, I don't understand it, but the new home builders got to all time highs. Yeah. And a lot of that was luxury homeowners because they weren't financing. But mm. with the with 30 year fixed has come down and with the potential of rate cuts, and cutting down the 30-year fix going down even more, mm. I guess it does make sense to go into the real estate sector. Yeah, and I'm guessing too, he's probably got some REITs and things like that, which the yields tend to stay up while yes. yields on treasuries and everything else are going down. So that yield spread's going down. That, that's the only reason I can figure out that real estate's had such a, a jump up here. Recently. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So I thought this was interesting too. Credit card spending by category. And mm -hmm. if you're looking at this, you're checking out where people are spending less money. Mm. So let's just check three things here. Look at the red lines. Entertainment. Mm -hmm. You would figure throughout the entire summer, people would just be spending money. Yeah. And the precipitous drop in entertainment is pretty significant. And what else do you do during the summer? Travel. Yeah. Drive around. Gas, people are spending less on gas. And the last one, which was very big during uh, COVID and whatever, people love putting money into their houses. Yeah. Home improvement is down significantly. Furniture is down. And we all know massive. people are spending money on their credit cards, not really taking cash out of their pocket. Yeah. So this is a pretty good indicator of where things are. Yeah. Look at the numbers for general merchandise and groceries. You yeah, know, people putting credit, yeah, putting groceries on credit. That's really interesting and sad at this point because it's getting out of hand. 
I'll share this next week because I don't know if I can find the chart again, but I was I was interviewed by a reporter and we were talking a little bit about some of the some of what's going on with credit and everything else. And I I had found a chart that I shared from the St. Louis Fed that showed credit card default rates. And yes. credit card default we rates have now that. reached the uh, really well, they've reached the high since 2012 at that point. And and in 2012, they were on the way down. Now they're on the way up and they're precipitously going up. And I honestly, with rates coming down, I don't really see credit card companies reducing their rates. Why yeah. would they? Why, yeah, why would they? And they're at risk because they're, Nobody yeah, nobody's forcing them to. And they're at risk because if default rates are going up, somebody's got to pay for those defaults. And it's us that have credit cards that are paying our bills. There was two areas with the credit cards, and we've covered this almost ad nauseum in the last year. Number one was the, the, the carryover credit card balance yep. is over $1.1 trillion. But in a recent podcast, we talked about the 30, 60, and 90-day credit card default had spiked up yep. in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And the credit card companies are just licking their chops. Sure. Yeah. Crazy. Somebody's going to pay their bills, and, <laughs> and they'll pay them. I thought this was fun and interesting. Visual capitalists, we featured many of their charts over the year, over many podcasts in the last year. And look, AI, look, I always, always chuckle. I know we talked about it in a prior podcast that people think AI is this new, funny, fun, shiny object. Yeah. AI has been around decades, 30, yeah. 40, 50 plus years. Just the computing power today and the, the amount of data that we have to rely on producing good AI results is leaps and bounds where it was decades ago. Mm -hmm. But I find it interesting, four out of the top five holders of patents are Chinese companies. Yeah. Alibaba is interesting because they're in e-commerce. Mm -hmm. Where's Amazon on this list? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, where is Amazon, which is supposed to be the biggest, biggest Bang you don't see Microsoft in there. Yeah, you do see they Microsoft are on there. in there, but Google's I don't see Alphabet. There, oh, given. there. Okay, there's. I Alphabet. thought Google yeah. would be much higher. Yeah, yeah, because they're they've been on the ball. But I think honestly, I think Google, I think got caught flat footed a little bit because I don't think they thought that it was going to be as big as quick as it has. So I, they're making up for ground fast, and I think some of their stuff is good. But I, me, I write books. I use AI for a lot of stuff from research to just helping craft the message and everything else to get started. And that at least from a language model perspective, there's really no comparison from chat GPT to, to Gemini. Gemini is great for just gathering data, but as far as a language model, it's really not that good. It's where chat was probably this time last year when it really got off and got started launching. So they're probably a year behind. Now they've got the money to, <laughs> they've got the money and the smarts to I think get them there, sure. but it's it's amazing how- I heard per perplexity, even though they're not a public company, uh -huh. I heard is probably the best out of all of them where they are right now. But I find it to be interesting, the number four company, which was a company that was left for dead in the last 10 or 15 years, is IBM. Yeah. And then I thought about it. They were one of the originals with mainframe computers and mm. building algorithms back yep. in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So they've been ahead of the curve. They just haven't had the technology and the bench of employees. But really the, the amazing but part of that, that is they really were doing a lot of this AI stuff with Watson yeah. when it wasn't cool. I that's what the that I, 20, I think people don't years understand. Ago. I remember them advertising Watson five, six, seven years ago and talking about how it's being used in the medical industry and things like that. I just I think people it was not stuff that was available to the general public. You had to be a big company or something like that to use those data analytics, but they've been in, in the game for quite a while. Think about it. 20, 25 plus years ago, Watson was used for two things mm. to prove its worth. Yep. Number one, to play chess against the greatest chess players in the world. <laughs> and number two, I don't know if you remember this, Jeopardy. Remember? Okay. They used Watson as a Jeopardy and it was so damn quick 
it was it beat like the top champions yeah. in Jeopardy. Yeah. So again, why uh, AI is not a shiny new object? It's not, it is a shiny new object because it's become something that the common man can use. More now. mainstream. Yeah, yes. it's more mainstream, and people. Are, oh my God, I can see how great this is. It's been around for a long time. <laughs> it has, and I thought this was interesting too. This is uh, inflows into the market, and it was a stat I think two weeks ago. Warren Buffett or call it Berkshire, because it's not just Warren, owns more treasuries than our U.S. government. <laughs> so if you take a look at the inflows here of just government securities, what does this tell it? Market, market's near all-time highs, mm -hmm. but meanwhile, people are still fearful and buying risk-free products at yeah. low interest rates. Yeah. Tell, please, connect the dots for me. I think Uncle Warren's just sitting there waiting for the blood to hit the streets and then he'll sell all that. You know, I want him to find an anti aging formula so he could have another 50 years on the market so we can follow. Absolutely. Yeah. He's, he's going to be 94 just, in October. I know. And he's still going strong. Charlie always looked a lot older, but Warren, he, his brain is just a machine. He's the guy he that you want to lop his. You want to lop his head off and then figure out a way to attach it to another, a younger body and keep going. Hey, they did that with Ted Williams and Walt Disney. Maybe they could do that with Warren. Absolutely. Maybe we'll find a way to sew it back onto something else. But another perfect example of the, the argument that the president, he's, it was because of his age. No, it's not because of his age. There's people that are in their 90s. I think of people like Sumner Redstone and all these guys that... They just never stopped working. It's there's it's, a lot to be said about that. Yeah, yeah there's something to be said Maybe about you're not just, doing 50, 60 hour power weeks. No, nope. but to keep involved, to yeah. keep busy, to get the mind going, that cognitive reasoning is huge. Yeah. I was telling somebody this morning that I, a friend of mine that was here, we were talking about retirement income and he was saying something about older people or people that look older. And I was like, in this industry, and I know you've probably seen it too. I know some of the youngest 80-year-olds and the oldest 60-year-olds that I've ever met. And it's all how you take life. And those people that have continually, okay, they finished a career, but then they started something else because they yeah. wanted to keep in the game. They wanted to keep their, that's what keeps you young is that connection with other people, keeping your brain going and everything else. Jeff, I told you this. My father's 83. Yeah. He works in he works in my business. Yep. Now he's not doing 40, 50 hour weeks. Nope. But he's putting in his time and he's still working with many of his clients that are still around that he's had for 35, 40 plus yeah. years. <laughs> that are as old as he is, and they're just they're keeping on. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I got. I will okay. turn it over to you. Let me pop it up on my screen for my little rant here because just a little. Just a little rant. It, it's just a small little rant today. Let me see here. Share screen. This, so my rant is on the wonderful world of our government data collection and Yay. reporting. This week, it was announced that the Labor Department had to revise their figures for the last 12 months through March that there were 818,000 less jobs, fewer jobs than they had reported earlier. So when we think about that, 818,000 jobs on 2.9 million is 31% less than what had been reported. And the funniest part I think of this week was the what this really means. Is this incompetence? Is it lies from the government? Take your pick. So let me give you a comparison. If you flew from Los Angeles to New York and it was off by 31%, you would end up in Chicago. It's 1,090 miles away. If your doctor gives you six months to live and it's 31% wrong, you have 4.2 months. So... That's massive. And from the government, I've seen several people come out, but the best of all was, if I can get this thing to advance, I'm having some weird computer issues today, so come on. I thought it was interesting while you're doing that, I had yeah. noticed that this was the largest revision 
since 2009. Yeah. Yeah. We all know what happened in 08 and 09. Yeah. All right. Hang on a second. I'm just bringing this back up here. Maybe not. Okay. So my favorite part of this was the Commerce Secretary was interviewed during the, the convention and she said, oh, no, it's a Trump misinformation. And they're like, no, ma'am, this actually came from the Labor Department, which I hate to tell you this, you actually oversee this at that yeah, point. Spin doctors. Yeah, spin doctorate. Once again, we're off. Why is this important? Because the Fed says, you know what, we're data dependent. Now, the Fed did not revise these numbers, but they're having to rely on these numbers from other departments. And if they're massively wrong, that means that the Fed's been utilizing these numbers and going, oh, the employment situation's still strong, and it's not so much. Now, when it comes to the, was it just a weird anomaly? So that's the other thing I've heard. It's a weird anomaly. In 2023... They were actually off by 439,000 jobs, which was only 20% off that year, 21% right. off that year. How does this affect the markets? It really doesn't. It's not going to affect the markets. The markets aren't going to change as a result of this. Companies aren't going to adjust what they're doing because of these numbers. No. Companies are going to figure out what to do. The stock the companies already know their numbers. Out. Yeah. But if we cannot rely on, on these people... And like I said, it's one of two things. It can only be incompetence or untruth. There is no in between. There is no, oops, we did a, we carried it one or something like that. No, this is massive incompetence. And we demand, we, we should have more out of our government that we're paying a massive amount out of. These people should know all this stuff and they're not getting it right they're getting and, it wrong and in our pre-show we were talking and i was saying you know what if they were off this much 30 40 plus years ago that's one thing but with the technology yeah and the ability to get the data as quickly as we can and hopefully as accurately as we can mm -hmm. there's no excuse yeah there, there is not no excuse. yeah stop spending billions and billions of dollars on crap and start spending some money apparently with Watson and IBM because they've got a lot of patents. <laughs> Spend some money that will help you. At least it's a U.S. Data. based company. Yeah, yeah, not the Chinese companies that have all the patents, but the top U.S. company with the patents is IBM. Maybe you need to spend a little bit of money with them to figure out how to make this work better because this is it's absolutely insane why you would be off that much. And and I love hearing some of the spin on this from the media, but it was still 2.1 million jobs. Yes, but it's 31% off. That is insane. Yeah. How could you be off that much? I, I just don't get it. But they still say there's 152 million people working versus 153. Big freaking uh, deal. Yeah. <laughs> There is no excuse. You're there still no wrong. Excuse. It doesn't matter if it, oh, it's still great because we have all these people. Working. It doesn't matter. You're still massively wrong and you got caught being wrong again. So my rant over, I just had to say that this was- All right, did, did you have your medication week. standing by? You're going to be yeah, all right? Yeah, I know. I have my Prozac standing by. Uh, it's just insane. Like I said, I've just, you know, it's something that it hit the numbers and I looked and I was like, Okay, yeah, it's off a little bit. 800,000 doesn't seem like that much until you do the math. And I'm like, how can you be a third off? That's insane. Hey, well, welcome to the U.S. What can yeah, I tell welcome you? to the U.S. I, I remember listening to something. At, at, I'm a big Rick Steves fan. And he was talking about in the Scandinavian countries when he was there. He's, you know, they pay a lot of taxes and all this. And they demand a lot of their government. I'm like, you know what? We need to start doing the same thing. <laughs> I demand a lot out of my government because just accepting them doing whatever they want to do. And I, I can guarantee you, I could probably go back into, you know, Republican administrations and the same crap has gone on because it's the same people that have been Especially in the bureaucracy. During election season. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same people that have been in the bureaucracy. So they're just, yeah, once again, it, it's just they're. It you can't get people that are politically neutral to work in these important statistical jobs. Yeah. Everybody's got an opinion like a belly button, right? 
Yep. So at the end of the day, can you believe, I remember before at least the last three or four elections, the other side that was not in power couldn't mm. wait for the labor statistics yeah. because they wanted to try and use that. But as we all know, look at the revisions. Yeah. So unfortunately, what does it matter? the majority of the people out there, and here's my quick rant, are yeah. just sheep. Yeah. They vote either red, they vote blue, right? And then when a number comes out, they just read a headline. They don't mm. read the article. Yeah. The scary thing is now the now the computers are reading the headlines and reacting <laughs> at that point. It's that I, I never thought I would say or I would say at any point it's a good thing that we have humans still involved in the process. You would think computers would be rational and would look at everything and then take that into account. But no, they've been programmed to on a dime change and they want to be the first one out when everybody else gets out. But don't forget too, the humans can be bought, the computers can't. That's exactly correct. Although the humans that can be bought program the computers. So. That's even better. Folks, thanks for joining us. Pardon, pardon the rant, but I just had to do it. Great information from Ron today. I, it was really interesting on the patents. I think that's it's something that says, hey, we've got to get on the ball more and we need to support some of these companies to help them. So let's not pass any legislation that screws them over because somebody's going to get the patents and somebody's going to be in charge of AI. And I really don't think it's probably a good thing that our probably biggest, our biggest competitor is the one that's really controlling AI at this point. So thanks a lot. And we will see you guys back here the very next time.